You know what scares the shit out of me? Dying. Now, you would think that that'd be one of those things that kind of goes without saying. Dying scares everybody, even the people who purportedly believe that they're going to go to paradise afterwards. But if you follow as many atheists online as I do, you could be forgiven for thinking that fearlessness in the face of death was an outright prerequisite for atheism. I see this shit all the time. People ask in all sincerity how atheists cope with death, only to be met by a profoundly cavalier dismissal. The one I most often see is attributed to Mark Twain, right, where he supposedly said, I had been dead for billions and billions of years before I was born and had not suffered the slightest inconvenience from it. And, uh, you know, I'll admit that's a great fucking quote. I love that quote. There are situations where that is exactly the right thing to say, but there are also situations where that is a terrible thing to say. And I see it used in both types of situations about equally. To understand why, you have to consider that fear of death is probably the number one thing standing between most Americans and outright atheism. Set aside the extremists for the time and, and just lump in all the non-church-going Christians with the spiritual but not religious types and the I kind of have my own religion, folks. If you could inject all of those people with some kind of truth serum that would force them to be honest with both you and themselves, most of them would admit that the chief benefit they get from the semi-religious status they have is some ambiguity about death. These aren't people who have hard and fast answers to what happens when you die. They're not even people who want hard and fast answers to that question. The more concrete the answer, the easier it's going to be for their mind to chip away at it. So they settle into a nice fluid of, yeah, nobody really knows what happens when we die kind of attitude, and they're happy to stay there forever. See, in a sense, because of this, the fundamentalist, biblical, literalist types are easier for us to convert. Their beliefs are like dense bricks being held together by a mortar of apologetics. Those make for pretty imposing defenses, but if you can knock out one fucking brick, the very weight of the construct is going to take the whole damn thing down over time. You take out the right brick and it'll crumble to dust right in front of you. But the moderately religious people are protecting their claims less behind a wall and more behind a smoke screen. It's never really a thing you can grab a hold of, and even when you reach for it, it retreats from you. So even if you manage to get rid of a brick's worth somehow, it's going to have no effect on the defense as a whole. And that's why when they present us with a genuine question about the thing at the center of that defense, their fear of death, we need to do better than meh. We need to do better than waving our arms and hoping that the question goes away. And look, I get why atheists don't want to talk about this. Religion's answer on the death question is really fucking good. Now, in our defense, they're fucking lying, right? If we got to lie, I feel like we could come up with a better afterlife than they did. Like, here you go. You spend eternity being treated exactly how you treated your pets. Boom, done, way better. But instead, we're stuck with the truth. And the truth is that there's no reason to believe in an afterlife. And that truth is really fucking scary. So you ask religious people what happens when we die and their eyes just light up. They got streets of gold, personal planets and rivers of honey to sell you. You ask an atheist what happens when you die, and as often as not, you get a whole lot of pretend ignorance. And that's usually followed by cavalier Mark Twain quotes or something like that. But look what happens when we fall into that trap of treating death as no big deal. At best, the person we're talking to assumes that we're lying to them. They assume that we're so scared of death that we can't even admit how scared we are without risking our conviction in a rational worldview. Now, just like religious people, we're lying about death to make them and ourselves feel better, and it gets that much easier to dismiss us as no different than the other guys. And that's best case scenario. Worst case scenario is that they actually believe us. They actually think that we're so brave that we don't fear death. And as badass as that might make us look, it's very likely going to leave them with the impression that they're never going to have the kind of courage it would take to be an atheist. But if we're honest... If we talk about the anxiety and the ennui and the fear, if we talk about the glimmers of immortality that we seek from our art and our altruism and our progeny, if, if, if we admit that none of that is sufficient and we confess to our moments of grief and dread, then we've given them an opportunity to admit to themselves that we cope with our mortality the same damn way that they do. 